So we've seen the basic setup for creating our own ribbon, requiring the need to add a system table, and then enter the XML for a new ribbon, and then tell the database to use that ribbon. How about customizing that XML so that we can have another group here, some different commands in any one of these groups or in our new group, and then the option to trigger any other macros. Well, we need to be back in the database itself rather than the runtime version, so let's exit. And then reopen the database. Let's hold down the shift key to disable all the startup options. I want to customize the ribbon, so I need to be back in the table, uses ribbons. Now it is quite difficult to actually work within here because of the field not wanting to wrap where we want it to. Personally, I would tend to work on the XML in a text file. So here's our base text file, the ribbon XML. I'm actually going to save that. And we'll have ribbon XML version 2. That way, if the ribbon XML doesn't work, I can always revert back to my original by copying and pasting that ribbon code in. So in here, we might want to add other standard Microsoft commands. So in here where I've got a standard Microsoft command, the syntax is control ID MSO equals the ID MSO name. And I'll show you how you find these out. The label, which we can type what we like in there, that's what will be put onto the ribbon. And then enable equals true so that the button is actually visible. So how do I know what the ID MSO is? Well, we actually need to be back in access and be looking at the ribbon. So in the options, customize the ribbon, and then you find the command here that you're looking for. So maybe, for example, I want to add spelling as an option. Hover over the command and you'll see up pops a little box that tells you the group that this command's in, the short name for this command, which is spelling, and then the important bit in brackets there, spelling access, that is the ID MSO. Now, none of the ID MSOs have spaces in them, and obviously they must be unique so that Access knows which command you're talking about. So if I were to choose paste append as an example and just hover, in brackets it says paste append, paste special says paste special dialog. Some of them aren't so logical. Save as, file save as, save, file save. It's whatever is in the brackets is the ID MSO. So we can then go back to our ribbon XML and perhaps I want to add my spelling into this command section. So I need a line here. Let's put it below that one. It doesn't matter about the tabbing. That just enables you to read it much smoother. Control, ID, MSO. It's not even case sensitive either. That's just to make it easier to read. Spelling access. It does have to be spelled correctly though. Label. Label equals spell check. Labels can have spaces in. This is what the human will see. And then so the button is actually available. Enabled equals true. So that will add in an extra option called spelling and it will run the spell checker. Now, if I want to add in another group because that's an option, then I simply go after an existing group or maybe I'd like to go between these two groups. So let's go there. At the end of that group before the next group starts, I would like to start here in my own group. So group is group ID equals now, just to keep with my own naming convention here, I'm going to call it DB Custom Group 4. Label equals reports. And I close the group tag off, but then I need a closing tag. So I've put a couple of returns in there just to leave me space to add some buttons. Group. Now, in between here, I'm just going to copy one of these commands. Let's copy the close one so that I've got at least one option in my fourth group of reports, which is actually going to appear before the My section. So let's do a save. So this is XML version two, copy it all, come back to use this ribbons, delete the ribbon XML I've got in there already and paste in my new ribbon code. I do find it much easier to do that in a text package than try and do it in here because you can't press return in here because it drops out and enters the data. So let's save. Close the database. Let's close access and start from our shortcut so we can see what happens in access runtime. Double click, our ribbon appears with our new section, the report section, and the spell check is here. So if I view the employees, I can then run the spell check, which quite happily works. It says I can't find misses, but we'll cancel the spell check. But we can see that we can trigger any of the current access commands. So we can add an access command if we find out what its ID MSO value is from the ribbons. We can add new groups. What we now need to be able to add is our own little commands, which are effectively macros.
So we need a macro and then we can trigger that macro from a command up here on the ribbon. So let's go back to the actual database and within here we need a new macro. So we could simply create a quick macro that just opens the employees form. So a new macro, its action is open form. Open up the employees form. Let's open it up in dialog mode so it has to lock everything else out. And everything else is the default. So let's save, command, open, emps. I'm going to copy that so I've got the spelling right. Close and let's just test that that works. So that opens the employee form. Ought to really auto center. Let's go into design and tell the form to auto center yes. Test again. And now it dips in the middle. So that's fine. So I need to edit my XML. So down here where I've got button ID macro one, I want to add a second option in here. So I'm just going to paste in the name of the macro. So I've got that. I'm going to copy the whole button code. And then the syntax for a button is it must have an ID that must be unique. So I'm going to call it macro two. Nobody sees the name of the ID. So whatever you want to call it. The label is the important bit because that tells people what's going to happen. Let's say view employees and the on action is important. That tells it what to do. So that's this little command name here. Let's cut that and put that between the speech marks there. So this is the ability to run your own macros from a ribbon. It's a button, has to have a unique ID. The label is what people will understand. The on action is the macro name. And that macro name works with the sub macros that we've seen previously. You just put the name of the macro dot the name of the sub macro. So we can save our XML, highlight it all and copy. Come back to our database, edit the sys ribbons by pasting in our third lot of ribbon code. Save, so that goes into the table. Exit the whole application and start from a shortcut. There we can see our new button in my section, view employees, and it opens the employees form, which I can then close, or I can say hello. So we can add groups, we can add buttons that trigger macros, we can add buttons that trigger access commands. You are totally in command and control of this ribbon that will load when your database is used in access runtime.